Hey developers, today we're gonna look at 2019. I'm gonna give you my predictions on the top technologies that you guys should be using for web development and just in general. Make sure you stay all the way to the end to learn all about it. Hey, and before we begin, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Let me tell you guys about this amazing team management tool, monday.com. Now, monday.com is perfect for any size team. Doesn't matter if you have two freelancers working together or thousands of collaborators across the globe. It's perfect for any of those scenarios. It's also great for development teams and non-development teams. So you can have your HR production. They can all use this tool to keep track of everything they need to do in their everyday work. It's very intuitive. You can connect people to processes. It's colorful and very beautiful. It's really simple, but not simplistic. So I would recommend you guys check out monday.com. Make sure you click on that link in the description below and you can get a 14 day free trial. Make sure you check out monday.com. Hey, and if you don't know who I am, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I have several years of software development experience. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in action book published by Manning. I'll have links below for all that stuff if you guys are interested. So uh, let's begin and get right into this information. All right, here are the technologies that I am most looking forward to in 2019. So here they are. Uh, here's my presentation here. So first, I had to choose what these technologies would be, and I had some criteria for them. For the, for the first part is momentum. So I wanted to look for technologies that have been getting a lot of momentum, a lot of steam in the last couple of years, especially this year. And all these technologies, check mark, have that check for that box. Also, they have to be able to solve real problems. So these are problems that we have in our industry. A lot of them have been solved by other solutions, but these are technologies that have improved and made the uh, solving of these problems even better. They also have to have trust. I was looking for technologies that have either large communities already or up and coming communities that are getting larger every day. And they had to be backed either by a large company as well. So uh, yeah, I could do either or. It doesn't have to be backed by a large company, but that always helps. And also it has to be mostly uh, open source. And as you can see here, it has to be the right timing. So these technologies um, have to be have to have the right timing. So some of these things would have worked 10 years ago, but them coming out in the last year or two have been perfect. So the first one I want to talk about is blockchain. So a lot of cool stuff is coming in the blockchain in the crypto worlds. So first, uh, 2018 was not a great year for cryptocurrency. In general, the market was really down for almost all the different technologies out there. There was a lot, lot of large companies that came into the space that didn't do that great. But I think what we're going to see in 2019 is the marketplace is definitely going to be stabilized. We're not going to see these huge dips. We're going to see a constant growth up and to the right. I'm also thinking that uh, we're going to start seeing more stable blockchain projects coming out. Security is going to be a bigger emphasis. So I want to keep an eye out for that. There's a lot of ICOs and other things that are coming, initial coin offerings, and a lot of technologies that are looking at uh, distribution, uh, decentralization of information. And I think we're going to keep a look at, look out on that and see how these technologies and these companies uh, go, um, go forward in the future. So most companies are going to jump on the peg. More companies are going to jump on the bandwagon. So more and more are going to look at these technologies. They're going to see how they can put it inside their portfolio, um, how they can be figure out novel solutions. And really, I think there's going to be some disrup disruption in the industry. We're going to look at these decentralized apps. They're going to take old existing old systems and they're going to put a blockchain spin on it. And it's just not going to be a name only. They're going to find some creative solutions and there's going to be some disruption. Uh, I think it's a good, good time to invest in, in blockchain in your favorite cryptocurrencies. I think it's the future is going to be bright. So GraphQL, I th that is a query language for your API. So there's some really cool things it does. Uh, it's been around for a little while. I think it's going to keep on getting more and more momentum. Um, first, you know, requests, you can get more resources in a single request. It has a type system. So if you aren't familiar with GraphQL, here are some things that it does. APIs are organized in terms of types and fields, not endpoints. Code, many server libraries are supported. I mean, there's almost 
all of them. Uh, community has a very active and engaged community backed by Facebook and has this versioning aging aging fields can be depth created and hidden from tools. So it has a lot of really cool features that kind of compete against the normal REST endpoints that we see today and the RESTful APIs that are out there. So I think this is a really cool shift of how we think about APIs and the back end and how we query them. Um, I, I keep an eye out on GraphQL. I think more and more people are going to move toward it. It's going to become larger and larger, and it will change the way we deal with the back end. Serverless. So first, uh, serverless uh, has kind of been this buzzword we've heard for the last couple of years. I think year 2019 is going to be year of serverless. Uh, pretty much any conference you go to, there's at least one person doing a serverless talk. So you can tell that it's it's becoming more and more uh, popular. So, I mean, all the servers in the cloud, AWS Lambdas are going to be really, I mean, uh, Amazon is really corner of the market on a lot of the serverless stuff, but don't count out Azure or GSCP. Um, there's a bunch of companies that are doing this. So it's basically you have this cloud computing. It's pretty cheap too. Your paper, the resource used, um, you can spin it up, spin it down. It's great for like sessions and things like that. There's a lot of use cases for serverless and more creative ways that people are learning about serverless all the time. And it's so cheap that it's, you're going to see more and more people move over to this and find out where they can use it. Dynamic managing resources. So you don't have to worry about, uh, you don't have to worry about like spinning up your whole servers. Um, I think people really are going to look at this and, and start flocking to this once they figure out solutions that work for you. It's not going to work for every solution. You're still going to have your Ruby backends, your PHP backends, your Java, uh, .NET. You're still going to have those backends, but there's going to be more and more almost like recipes, like how we can use serverless, how can we plug it into our existing architectures. And there's going to be a lot of architects that are going to look at serverless to see what they can do. And it's basically it's going to shift in how we work with computing. So it's definitely going to be a shift there. And uh, yeah, it's a new way of thinking on how we can run our backend services. So JavaScript. Uh, so um, it, it's the key to a lot of things. Um, I'm looking forward to in 2019. Of course, React.js being one of the biggest libraries out there for our, our front end, I think it's just going to continue to grow. But don't discount Vue.js. Vue.js is gaining, gaining a lot of momentum. A lot of people are using that as the alternative for React. By the way, I have a Vue.js in action book. I'm not just saying that, but you can see a link in the description below. Don't, don't count out Vue.js. Angular, I think it's still going to be in the solid third. I think some people were worried that Angular was becoming less popular and that a lot of developers moving away from it. But uh, Angular 2+, uh, I think we're on Angular 7 now. It's, oh, I think it's it's really solid with the TypeScript, all the cool momentum behind it. Uh, I would definitely keep an eye on in Angular. And if you have projects in Angular, I wouldn't worry and try to rewrite them in React or anything. And then just the whole spec, ES 2018, um, ES 2019, we're just going to continue to see success for JavaScript. There's going to be more and more libraries and frameworks coming out. And the whole spec for ECMAScript is going to continue to evolve. We're going to get cooler and cooler features. So definitely in 2019, JavaScript is something that uh, you do not want to miss and, and keep an eye out for it because it's going to keep on growing. It's definitely huge established and it's just going to get bigger and bigger. I'm not going to even talk about all the other things that people are talking about with JavaScript, with uh, WebAssembly and all that. I think that's too early to tell if that's going to go anywhere, but that might be something in 2019 to look at as well. So let's not forget progressive web apps. They are reliable, fast, and engaging. So basically, in 2019, we're going to see a big surge of these. What we're looking for in web apps that are progressive is that they're responsive. So they work on websites, on tablets, and mobile devices. They also have great performance. So even on like a slow or fast 3G connection, they work pretty well. They also work uh, great with caching. So they have the site uses uh, cache first networking and forms when they are offline. And importantly, most importantly, I think with progressive web apps is that this have this offline technology, which app URLs load when they're offline. They use basically service workers and they use this web app manifest so you can add it to your homepage. I think progressive web apps have been in a lot of people's minds. I think this is going to be the year that we keep seeing more and more of them in 2019, and they're going to get bigger and bigger. 
So thank you for watching this cool, quick technology presentation on 2019. So if you guys like this type of videos, make sure you click that little like button on the screen and share this with your friends and leave a comment below and let me know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think these technologies are going to be big in 2019? Do you think I'm off the mark? If I'm missing something, let me know. Like I said, I didn't mention some things like WebAssembly or uh, I don't know, some, some things with uh, artificial intelligence, AI, or things like that. But if you think those are going to be big in 2019, I'd love to hear what you guys think. So leave a comment below. Also make sure, like I said, you share this with people. And if you guys like, uh, I put a links in the description below of all the things I talked about today, including my book and my course. And if you guys want to check that out, that would be awesome. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Take care. Have a great end of your 2018 and an awesome 2019. Thanks.